but they play more D5 defensive backs than any team in football 95% of the time. So you're essentially a weak side linebacker in the run game as well. Here's Higgins wide open to midfield and lowers the shoulder for 13. This is where Joe Burrow is so good. And now another Bills player is down. Can't tell exactly who that is. Maybe Hamlin. Jordan Poyer was able to go tonight. He was iffy. Their only pro bowler on this very good defense. Hamlin's taking the place for the injured Micah Hyde. And that is DeMar Hamlin. A big piece of this defense for Sean McDermott back after this. Well this is the last thing you want to see as they brought the stretcher out they have that backboard out DeMar Hamlin is the one who was in on that stop on T Higgins and then he got up and just went right back down to the ground. That's uh, not what any of us want to see, and everybody's around him, and just hope that he's going to be okay. So we'll take another break here in Cincinnati after that injury. Well, you can see that the ambulance is out there on the field, and they are intensely working on DeMar Hamlin. There's just nothing to say right now. We'll take another break and come back. Welcome back to Cincinnati where medical personnel have been working on Bill safety DeMar Hamlin for the last nine minutes. Hamlin made a hit. He got up took a couple of steps and then just fell to the ground. We don't know of course the extent of his injuries but the entire Bills team is out on the field right now. Several players are down on their knees. Other players are holding hands praying. You can just see the worried looks uh, on their faces. As soon as we have more, uh, Joe, we'll pass it on up to you guys in the booth. Okay, Lisa, we're going to take a break. They have been administering CPR through these past two breaks that we've taken. And as Lisa said, DeMar Hamlin has been down for over nine minutes now. with everybody watching, praying, and hoping for the best. Well, the players now for both teams are so tight around DeMar Hamlin, it's tough to get our cameras in there. Maybe that's for the best, but they have him on a backboard, I am told, and now on a stretcher. We'll send it away from here. Just nothing more to say at this point. We'll give you an update as soon as we can. We'll send it to Susie Culber. Okay, Joe, we're watching just this emotional scene play out in Cincinnati from here in our New York studios. DeMar Hamlin, a pit grad, 24 years old, administered CPR down, obviously, for an extended period of time. And just to watch the emotion in the players' faces, the fear, 
I mean, really just terrifying that he was up, collapsed to the ground. And it's one of those things, the hit doesn't look bad, but Boog, I mean, often, like, often that's how it is. It's not necessarily about a big hit. It's about the type of hit. Yeah, so we, we play a violent game. And, um, man, you just, you just hate to see it. That's all. I, I, just, I, I just pray for the young man. Pray for his family right now. That's, that's all I can say. All I, all I know how to do right now. Well, when a teammate is down and then the game is expected to resume, how as a player do you gather yourself? Um, I, I've never been in that situation. Um, I don't even know if any of these players are thinking about that right now. I, I think by the look on their faces, they're all concerned um, about their teammate because their teammate on the field is bigger than whatever is going to happen at some point tonight on the field. Uh, the well-being of their teammate is bigger than any whatever the outcome of this game is going to be. So I, I don't think these players are worried. I wouldn't be worried about that. I don't think they're concerned about that. Um, if they have to, I guess they'll figure it out. But the health and well-being of our brother on the field is the most important thing right now. And you, you gather yourself and you focus. You figure out a way to focus. Well... It's chilling to watch it's the chilling. whole thing. There's no other way to describe it. And you're not used to seeing something like this unfold where an ambulance is on the field. I, I don't recall seeing an ambulance on the field. And to just see this, um, there's prayers all across the NFL community. Everybody's thinking of DeMar Hamlin right now. And that's all we can do is hope and pray that he's okay because it is chilling and scary to watch that entire situation unfold on the field, everybody gathered around him and everybody praying that this young man is going to be okay. It's just tough, man. It's, it's tough to watch, man. Because, man, we, we, we come together to play this game and to compete. Um, and, like, the only rule we have, like, we want to walk off and go home to our families after the game, man. And, yeah. and, and to, to see this young man there, man, that's, that's tough. To your point, Boog, the teams are going to be given as much time as they need to gather themselves to be able to resume playing. And DeMar Hamlin was given oxygen as he was being loaded in the ambulance. I mean, of course, throughout the evening, Lisa Salters there on the sideline will keep us posted on his condition. And that will be foremost in our thoughts. That's, that's what everyone in the NFL community will be focused on and thinking about. And uh, we'll take a break, and uh, we'll be back from Cincinnati and New York after this. Well, we will welcome you back here to Cincinnati. We've heard from Lisa, sent it back to the studio. Um, Damar Hamlin fell at 8.55.03 was on his back and it went from wondering what was going on to wondering about head injury to then them frantically administering CPR to this 24 year old safety. And this is a Bills team. You during the break we watched Sean McDermott call his team over and say we're going to say a prayer. We're going to say a prayer for DeMar. They're going to try to continue to play this game. John Smith has gone over to each head coach. The two head coaches you can see got together and they'll have five minutes to warm up. And Troy, I mean, you played this game for the majority of your life. And then after that, you've been calling these games. First of all, I've never seen no. anything like this. And then the question turns to how do you as a member of the Buffalo Bills or the Cincinnati Bengals uh, really continue on and want to play football at the intense level it takes to go out there and, and play this game. Well, the game becomes secondary, there's no doubt, and everybody's thoughts now and throughout the rest of this ball game are going to be on the well-being of DeMar Hamlin, and you can see it in all of the players' faces and the concern and how they are then able to come back and, and play a football game is no one's been through this. I've never seen anything like it either. John Perry, 
uh, as an official. You and I were talking uh, yeah. during the break. I, I mean, this is uh, this is uncharted water really for everyone. Right. 20 years. I, I've never felt what I'm feeling right now. I haven't seen what we have been watching for the last 10, 15 minutes. And uh, it just puts things in perspective real quick. Zach Taylor is now walking across the field to Sean McDermott as these two head coaches are going to get together again. Let's send it down to Lisa. Yeah, guys, just so much emotion down here on the Bills sideline right now. After Hamlin was taken away by ambulance, the Bills players just came to their sideline and they just looked devastated. Some players just sat staring out of the field. Other players were hugging each other. Other guys were openly weeping. Uh, at one point, Stefan Diggs tried to, to refocus everybody. He called everybody to gather around him. I could hear him trying to fire the team up, but after that was over again, players back to the bench, uh, just looking devastated, hugging each other, and, and openly crying. Yeah, Lisa, they, as we said, they've been given five minutes to quote unquote get ready to go back to playing. That's the word we get from the league and the word we get from down on the field, but nobody's moving. I mean, nobody's out there really warming up. Everybody's just stagnant. And it looks like Sean McDermott, after talking to Zach Taylor, is going to pull his team the off game the has field. Been temporarily suspended. Joe, just talked with New York in the command center. The situation has risen to a point where they want to give both teams, coaches, personnel, an opportunity to go back into a locker room, regroup themselves, and so the game has temporarily been suspended to give them the opportunity. Whatever they need at this point, the teams are driving it. Which I think they should. You know, this now is up to these players, I think, and these two head coaches with what they get sense wise from their team as to how much they want to go back out there and continue playing this game. I think it's the right call to give them a moment to go back in away from our cameras away from this big crowd in Cincinnati have a chance to regroup talk the crowd here has been great by the way throughout this they don't know what's going on and now these players are going back to their locker rooms and I assume they'll have a real frank discussion as to whether they want to go back out there and play this game tonight. Yeah, I would think so, too. I don't know. Is that off the table, John? I don't know what the what the league is saying to you necessarily, but I can't imagine going in and being able to to regain any type of composure to where you can come out and expect to play in a competitive football game. I'm not sure anything's off the table. I think at this point with what we are working through in the players and the teams, uh, I think they're just trying to do what is in best interest of this athlete. So we'll step aside. We'll keep you updated right now. We'll send it back to the studio and Susie Colbert. Joe, it's it's a complete unknown and it feels like almost an unprecedented situation. So, I mean, it's just so jarring to see the, the players faces and and how they feel. And all I could think about is you want them to be together in the locker room as a family, to be together, to, to talk about this, and, and what they want is a group. And we really don't know if, if Bill's players say, we can't move forward until we know how our teammate is. I'm not sure what, else, what the league can do. Yeah, I mean, it, their teammate was just giving CPR in front of them on the field. Um, that'd be the only thing I'd be concerned about is, is he okay? What's going on? I don't want to hear about the game. I don't want to hear about a game plan. I don't want to hear about what in the NFL is talking about. I want to hear about how my teammate is doing. Yeah. Is he okay? I need to hear that before I can talk about anything else tonight. That's why they go to the locker room, and that's why they suspend this right now, because we haven't seen a situation like this before where all that matters is how DeMar Hamlin is doing right now. Until we know how he's doing, nothing else matters right now. So everybody can go to the locker room and we can all await an update 
and hope and pray that this young man is okay. Because how can anything else but that matter right now? We've never seen that in an NFL game. We've never seen an ambulance come on the field, a player administered CPR, the game temporarily suspended. Um, it's very hard for everybody. Um, and so you heard John Perry talking about the fact, that as he was saying that, as long as he's done this, I've covered the sport since 19. I don't ever recall an incident in game like this, ever. It's never happened, I don't believe. Um, there have been times in training camp where someone's hurt, yeah. an ambulance comes mm -hmm. on the field, and it, it never, ever gets less chilling or less jarring, ever. And when it's on a, a platform like this, a stage like this, um, and you see that happen, it's, 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 it's awful. It's awful. Everyone's so shaken. I, I can't really remember seeing players openly cry as what we've seen tonight. It, it's, Susie, like, we, we, we break bones. We, we, we have surgeries, we get concussions. And like as football players, we're conditioned to deal with those things. Like that's a part of our game. When, when you bring CPR out, you're trying to help someone breathe. We're talking life or death now. That's, that's, that's totally different than anything that I've ever been used to dealing with on the field. I've never seen it on the field. Like that's real. Like this is, what we do is just a game. When you, when you involve life and death, it, it's, it's totally, it's totally different. And th those players feel that. Everybody in that stadium feels that. Both teams feel that. That's, th that's something. Again, th the rule is when we go compete, mm -hmm. we're going to compete and then we're going to go home to our families. When, when we involve life and death, and that, that's, that's, man, that's tough. We're all waiting and, and, and praying and Everybody thinking is. about DeMar Hamlin. Um, given oxygen, taken by ambulance, and uh, nothing else really matters now until um, hopefully we get some news that's uplifting. And we uh, continue to follow. We're here with you from New York and Cincinnati. And moments later, the two teams headed into their locker rooms. Damar Hamlin, 24 years old, sixth round pick from Pitt, injured at 8.55 Eastern time. So we are now over an hour since that transpired and left the stadium by ambulance at 9.25 Eastern. And we have no update on his status, no official update on his status as we talk here roughly 10 o'clock Eastern. Well, John Perry just heard the official word that play has been suspended for the rest of the night. And so this game with Cincinnati scoring on their first possession. The Bills going down the field, getting a field goal. This will be picked up at another time, a time that at this point is undetermined. 